Hello guys, today I'm visiting Aleph BC. I'm here with Eden Shochat, partner at the, this venture capital here in Israel. Thank you for coming. Hi, how hey. are you? Good, good. Welcome to WeWork. Thank you very much. So tell me a little bit, who are you? What's your name? What's, what, what's your background? What brought you here? Sure, name, Eden Shochat. That's easy enough, right? Uh, what, what brought me here? I, so when I, I, I was born right, <laughs> in a kibbutz, really? which is like the last socialistic experiment, I think, in the world. Uh, and it's, it's proven that you can share everything as long as you have nothing. Yeah. I think that's the biggest takeaway <laughs> from kibbutz. And we moved to Nigeria. And the good thing about Nigeria is there's nothing to do, so I learned how to program. And that really is what brought me here. I started four companies. I loved as a, as a kid seeing 3D and what is how you turn objects, how you move them around. Mm -hmm. So my first company was uh, in the 3D space, the uh, 3D engine. Ended up starting that, then an algo trading fund, then a company called Eternity that does uh, user experience monitoring. Um, and it's, it's already selling in uh, dozens of millions. Mm -hmm. And then a company called Face.com, they sold to Facebook. At which point I, I actually understood that my passion is supporting entrepreneurs and helping them build uh, big companies. And that is what brought me initially to a fund called Genesis, yeah. where I was a partner. And then today Aleph, uh, which is a $150 million uh, venture capital firm in Israel. So, so what do you guys do at Aleph? What's your focus on? Um, you have some big investments that you made in the last few months. Yeah, it's uh, we we actually have a pretty steady pace. So Michael and I started Aleph uh, some almost three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and Aleph is a is a strange fund in in many ways. It's a, what's called a partner only firm. So there are no associates, analysts, venture partners, principals, all the ones that can only say no. They just don't exist, mm -hmm. right? And so. Uh, because it's a partner-only firm, it allows us to basically interface with the entrepreneur and make the decision um, whether we want to invest or not. And the flip side of it is also this is an equal partnership. So it's just the two of us right now, and it's an equal partnership so we can have the same economic incentives in every company, and which brings both quick decision-making. So I think you referred to an investment we've made in a company called Lemonade, yeah. uh, which is a, a disruptor of the insurance space, so rebuilding the insurance industry. They're actually building a new, for a new kind of an insurance firm. And that was a $13 million round that we yeah. led. Uh, but we're also investors into WeWork, where we're sitting today. And we're also investors into a company called Windward, for example, yeah. that track all the ships in the world. and they originally catching the Iranian bad guys, but <laughs> now also knowing what's the oil supply in Japan in six days. Right. Very good. So um, you recently, from out of VC, you have a lot of events for the entrepreneurs, also from outsiders, where you organize and gather a, lot of, a big community around out of VC. One of them was uh, the bug challenge that you recently launched. Yeah. Maybe can you elaborate a little bit on this? So what, you did, what did you see there? So. If you take a step back, right, we're we're a fairly large fund, definitely compared to Israel. It's uh, two partners investing 150 million dollars is a lot of money, yeah. right? So we generally don't do seed investing. What it means, though, is that when you have markets that are evolving, uh, for example, a year ago uh, we looked at uh, very closely at, at specific areas of blockchain, right, the, the infrastructure behind Bitcoin. And we saw that there was a lot of innovation in Israel, but not necessarily in areas we wanted to invest in. Yeah. So we issued the blockchain challenge, uh, and indeed there were multiple applications, of which one won, and we ended up investing in that company. Yeah. But we didn't expect to invest, and the same with the bot challenge. Uh, it's a very significant change in the industry. Right? If you look at text-based interfaces, right, that's DOS yeah. in the early days when we were all <laughs> kids, and then GUI that was born with the Xerox Spark, and then App Macintosh, and then Windows. Right, that was the big move, but it hasn't changed since. Yeah. Right. If you look, the web is simply another GUI. Right. Same with apps, another GUI, and bots and uh, conversational interfaces. The big change, recent change that's happening, and there isn't enough innovation in Israel, though there is a lot of capability set mm -hmm. in natural language parsing, in machine learning, in deep learning, machine vision. So there's a lot of knowledge around it, but there's not enough uh, work. So what we decided 
is that we'll issue a challenge, and the challenge is to create bots that would help entrepreneurs. Yeah. And we offer fifty thousand dollars to the uh, person or persons that build the bot, providing the most value to entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's it's basically like. If, if I understood correctly, bots in simple terms is a machine that is able to answer your emails, for example, in a way that like you don't even under, uh, know this as the recipient that a machine answered this email. Is so, so yes, kind of. <laughs> and why is kind of? So let's, let's, let's take an example of a, of a great bot, a service we actually use internally called Clara. Yeah. Right? That is a service that allows you to set scheduling. So when I email Emma, that's the name we chose, yeah. or, uh, the other side doesn't know that it's not a person at Aleph, but it's very, very likely that it's a person, but very much computer assisted. So mm -hmm. it's not even a robot necessarily, it could be a human, but that human is conversational, right? which like most humans, but it's also assisted by computers. So Clara is someone that offloads the work of calendaring. And it's a, we all know how, how much of a bother is calendaring. Yeah. And as they move on, there will be more and more AI, uh, yeah. artificial intelligence. Same, but very similar, but, but different is uh, a summary bot on Slack, yeah. for example, that you, you have a conversation on Slack, which you usually have, but then there is a bot that sits with you on that channel and sends a summary by the end of the conversation, right? So that's probably more computer oriented. Yeah. So as, as we move, the big change is conversation interfaces. And the question is how much humans will there be versus how many computers. But regardless, th these are all questions of costs. Mm -hmm. right? The more humans are involved, the more cost you have. But over time, that will change. Yeah. Is, is there any examples you can you know, elaborate on or like what they, what, did they hand in any applications already? Yeah, for the, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. We have 18 different applications, yeah. which, which is three times as, as much as we thought. And I won't spoil uh, <laughs> their surprise, right, because they, they're still working on this, all the teams. But it's entrepreneur oriented, so you can think of anything, like you want summaries of your competitors. When a competitor of yours comes yeah. out, you want to know as soon as possible. When your Twitter feed about your company blows up because you've done a great new release, you want to know about this, yeah. right? You want, basically you want someone, be it a computer or otherwise, that is working for you, right? Because if you look at the typical workday, we spend way too much time in emailing, we spend too much time in instant messaging, we spend too much time in overhead. So the, the goal for us is to help entrepreneurs get to, to be more productive. So, so people can still apply. Maybe you want to tell one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the to apply is bot. Dot Aleph A L E P H. Dot V C. That's a landing page, and you can register in the landing page. Yeah. We'll ask you a couple of questions, and then we'll reach out. When is the deadline? The deadline is in two months. Two months. Right. So you still have a good amount of time. You start working, right? And you <laughs> and we'll actually provide a sandbox so you can try out with real entrepreneurs. Yeah. How? Uh, what's your performance level? And what will what every entrepreneur after they get a service from your bot will ask them in something called an NPS, a Net Promoter Score. How likely are you to tell your friends that they should try out this bot? Uh, and that will be the scoring mechanism. Interesting. Okay, good. So um, in, I want to shift it like a little bit uh, into your expertise. I want to understand what do you think about the the venture capital market these days. Um, maybe you can give even a focus on on Israel. What, what do you, where do you see the market today? Do you think are we in a tech bubble like we had in, in the past? Um, you know, what do you think is, is the current venture capital status? So I think first, and I think the most important for the conversation, if you look at downturns, and we, we all went through cycles. Cycles is a typical thing because people are too excited and then too terrified. It's the greed and fear. And that's a cycle that will always happen. And we should just remember that, yeah. right? <laughs> and that's why venture capital, like Aleph, is a 12 years fund, which is even longer than the typical, right? So I usually joke that it's six governments in Israel, yeah. roughly, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's actually that duration is geared exactly to withstand multiple cycles. So yeah. first, that's the important thing to keep in mind, is we'll always have cycles. Now yeah. the question is, uh, within that cycle, well, what you need to remember is that most companies, most of the big companies, the, the Uber, the Airbnbs, many of them were created in down cycles. 
right? So sometimes the down cycle is actually very good for entrepreneurs because you don't have a lot of competition on the talent, right? So in a way, there is advantage to being in a down cycle. So that's that's important to keep in <laughs> mind. Now, what's what's the usual issue is uh, what's the funding environment like? And the funding environment outside of Israel and growth has been mad, right? You you had a lot of private investors yeah. that or investors that usually invested in public companies, but there weren't a lot of public opportunities, and they funneled money into the private market. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely see a lot of money flowing into the late stage growth historically. Yeah. And now much of that move, uh, money is moving away. So would I call it a bubble? No. Uh, but it's definitely, it was on the high side. Now, is Uber worth $60 billion? We don't know. We don't know. Right? And that's part of the issue. Yes. Right? <laughs> uh, and now, if you step back, what we see in Israel is actually the same amount of innovation and better companies. And that's something that we see over the last five years. Mm -hmm. So we're actually very bullish about it. Valuations have gone up. Uh, but also, and more importantly, seed stage investing, which usually was an issue in Israel, now has many more investors. Yeah. So you'll see more investments being done, some valuations get pulled down, definitely growth stage valuations will, will pull back, uh, but outside of that, I don't think that the market in high tech is big enough for there to be called a bubble. Right? Yeah, valuations might be 50% higher, but when you have billion dollar outcomes, the question is, did it really matter with a 50% more? Yeah. So just focus on making sure that you have money. Right? <laughs> Companies die of one reason and one reason alone. Execution. No, running out of money. Out of money. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, just one last very short question is because I'm in finance interested. What is like the most used financial model that you're using when mm. You're yeah. evaluating startups. Yeah, it's called the horse trading model. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, it's there's no DCF. There's no. When you look at startups at the beginning of innovation, right? If looking at DCF, looking at profits, you you very rarely have profits because just the operating costs are too high in building the company and then initial growth. What you do see, and the important is, we always look at the whether there's economic sense. Mm -hmm. Are you selling? every dollar in that you have in 90 cents and if so sure <laughs> people will buy but it's a bad business exactly. right so we usually we, we make sure that the company actually has a business that we believe in uh, but there's no comparable model to DCF basically it's competitive bids and that's what I tell every founder make sure that when you raise money you have at least two three four entities competing because that will help uh, solidify valuations and yeah. will uh, allow you to maximize the value right but outside of that there's no startups don't have a good valuation model okay very good so Eden thank you very much absolutely you're, you're a very busy man so I appreciate your time thank and, you for coming um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon <laughs>